Welcome to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm speaking to you from the New York City, Queens, the borough of Queens, actually. So this is the 25th day of August 2020. And um, I do like to remind you, I'm the author of a newsletter called Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. You can go there uh, by, uh, you can sign up there for that letter by going to miningstocks.com. Uh, before I go further on, I want to also tell you about uh, Investing 101 in gold and silver and the miners. Uh, I have now I've finished the first four of a five-lesson course. The first two lessons deal with both domestic economic policies as well as geopolitical issues and how they both are paving the way for what I believe is the bull market of a lifetime in gold and uh, also, I believe, a demise in the dollar as the world's reserve currency or at least as a dominant Point, a place that has held for a long time, certainly uh, in decline. Um, Alistair McLeod and others on this show vary on that. Uh, Alistair is a very strong bear on the dollar. Others have other views. But in any event, uh, that trend, I think, is quite clear. Uh, and I talk about those issues in the first two lessons of the five-lesson course, both of them very bullish for gold. The third lesson introduces a number of ways to own, buy, and store gold and silver, and I also discuss various derivative products like ETFs for owning the bullion as well as the uh, silver and gold mining shares. And the fourth lesson, I have focused on what you need to do or what you need to consider when investing in junior and junior gold and silver exploration companies and how you can improve your odds for success in those high-risk, high-reward markets. That is, in fact, what I spend most of my time on, uh, and that's the lesson I felt most comfortable talking about, actually. Um, and uh, it is certainly the time, I believe, in this bull market of a lifetime to, to be involved in those markets if you have uh, the uh, intestinal fortitude to stomach the risk. Uh, and then the last lesson, the fifth lesson, uh, I will be talking to Dr. Quinton Henning, who is, I believe, one of the most, if not the most sought-after exploration geologists in the world when it comes to, at least when it comes to the precious metals. And I'll be asking him to talk about what he looks for in an exploration project before he gets involved in either running a company or being involved as a uh, as a technical advisor, which he is a technical advisor to many companies. Uh, and also for Lesson 5, uh, I expect to interview Chen Lin, uh, who has been sensationally successful as an investor uh, with a concentration in the biotech and mining sectors as well as the energy sectors. Chen looks both at long-term prospects as well as shorter-term uh, entry and exit points in, a, in stocks, and he's done extremely well. So we want to ask him what his secrets are and what some of the things are, h- how his mind works in terms of investing, and uh, just for some tips that might be helpful to our, to the people that take the course. Uh, the gold and silver markets have cooled off now a bit since the last few sessions, uh, which I actually like because it gives me a bit more time to complete my Investment 101 course. Uh, before the precious metals make their next significant move higher. But make no mistake, we are in a bull market, a gold bull market of a lifetime, not because gold is suddenly becoming more valuable, but simply because fiat currencies around the world are in a last gasp effort to save themselves and their economies, uh, which have been corrupted by what amounts to elite members of society engaging in massive counterfeiting operations Debt creation, money created out of debt. The debt is growing much, much faster than incomes, and it is bankrupting nations, individuals, and nations around the world. So the um, the, the policymakers are, are in a last gasp effort, in my view, talking about extreme measures to try to keep the systems from imploding into a deflationary depression. They're printing money like mad. Modern modern monetary theory is now being discussed, and I understand uh, the. Uh, uh, Chairman Powell is going to make some uh, some comments uh, about inflation and perhaps encouraging a bit of inflation, the opposite of what Paul Volcker did in 19 back in 1980. Uh, so this should be very interesting, but I think uh, we are, without a doubt, in the bull market of a lifetime. I do want to encourage all of you to send your questions and comments along to questions for Taylor at gmail.com, and we do need to thank our sponsors for making the show economically viable, our sponsors for today's show, Benchmark Metals and V Gold. Cannon Metals, Irving Resources, Novo Resources, Sitka Gold Corp., and Lion One Metals. Well, the topic of today's show is the fourth turning, Ghost Towns, Murder, and Insanity Abound. 
I just mentioned that Dr. Quentin Henning and Chen Lin, uh, in connection with my uh, econo- with my course that I'm that I'm providing, but I'm happy to tell you that both of these gentlemen are with me today, uh, and then John Rubino will be with me in the second half of today's show, uh, and we're going to be talking about the issues of this show and the direction that the country is taking, not only economically but in various other ways, socially. Uh, as well, and we're seeing a lot of the things that yours truly has held dear in his life uh, suddenly come under attack. The idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is why we had a 1776 revolution, uh, and uh, now those ideals seem to be coming under attack to a very great extent. So we have uh, now a situation uh, where groups like Black Lives Matter and Antifa are violently uh, engaging and burning cities and uh, creating all kinds of mayhem, and we have a Democrat party that seems not to be too concerned about it. Nancy Pelosi claims to be a defender of the Constitution, but she can't bring herself to say one negative word about the looting and the burning that's going on in, by the Black Lives Matter and the Antifa folks. So we have iconic stores along New York City's Fifth Avenue lying in waste, boarded up, super wealthy are leaving the city in mass. What will remain of America's cities? More importantly, what will remain of liberty and justice for all? These are questions we're going to talk to John Rubino about in the second half of today's show. And then after our first commercial break, Quentin Henning is going to be with me to talk about the progress being made by Irving Resources. That's one another company that he's very much involved with on the board of directors and also as a technical advisor. He'll be with me right after the first break, first commercial break. But right now I'm happy to tell you that Chen Lin, my friend, is with me to share his current thoughts on a couple of the key markets uh, and if you are really a serious investor, a serious investor uh, who is actively involved in managing your own money, I think you definitely should consider subscribing to Chen Lin's service. And you can do that by going to ChenPicks.com. ChenPicks.com. Thanks for joining me, Chen. Thank you, Jay. Always a pleasure. Always good to have you with me. And I want to ask you, um, you know, just the most obvious question everybody on everybody's mind that listens to this show anyway probably uh, is gold. It's backed off from its high above 2,000. Uh, I saw it down around 1916 this morning. What are your thoughts on the price, and, and do you, what are your what are your thoughts in terms of its near-term prospects? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. Gold in the consolidation period, I usually in the bull market, it can last for a few days to maybe a couple of months. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, it really depends on uh, all these um, different. Are we going to get a stimulus or not? And you know, Jackson Hole speech you're talking about later this week, that could mark the turning point of gold. So mm-hmm. what I'm watching, right, really is uh, who are the buyer of the gold if the buyers can suddenly show up. So that mm-hmm. can determine the short-term uh, gold movement. So I'm watching very closely is uh, uh, the discount between Shanghai and New York, right? So mm-hmm. uh, Shanghai is have a huge discount uh, in gold price versus New York gold price. Uh, historically, always uh, at premium. And the reason was uh, Chinese uh, consumer like gold. China is the largest, uh, one of the China, India, one of the top largest gold consumer in the world. So gold mm-hmm. always go from New York or go from Switzerland, go from London to China. So that's why China has a little bit premium. This year is completely opposite. Uh, China, the discount is almost a hundred dollar. Uh, that's enormous, right? So if wow, you look at that's New York, incredible. We, we, yeah, we were we hit twenty one hundred. China only hit two thousand one, only one. Ah. So there are people. So so that's the thing. Uh, we were just look. I'm looking at it with a lot of curiosity. I think there's a couple of different reasons. One of the reasons is uh, people. Uh, there's some poor people. You know, in China, they need to sell gold to feed their family, right? Uh, mm-hmm. There's very little stimulus. Uh, by Ch- provided by Chinese government, so people need to feed themselves. It's very simple. Uh, same thing for India. Uh, people need in, in the pandemic. People need you know state people sell gold, right? I mean, there are people in Thailand, people waiting in line to sell gold. That the premier of Thailand had to tell their people, they don't wait, don't don't no rush. You know, we will have enough money printed for you <laughs> for your gold. So please don't rush to sell your gold. So uh, the, throughout Asia, people are selling gold. So that's why Shanghai has such a big discount to, to New York. So most buying are from New York. So one, one, I'm going to see if this trend is going to change. One day, if the discount of Shanghai versus New York got change, you know, shift dramatically, uh-huh. it could happen just overnight. That would be extremely bullish of gold. 
right? Uh, so that's when the possibility could be Chinese government buying gold. But we, I'm just looking at it. I think it should be, could be any day, you know, any, any week, any, any time now. So if that happens, that will be the signal for us to, you know, for, for next, next like, you know, and, you know, this is where in the bull market, and probably, and, you know, we're not even looking at $2,000 gold, we can have three, four, five thousand, you know, yeah. maybe yeah, much, much just... more, depending on the inflation. So, Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's yeah. uh, that's that's what I'm looking at. So, but we yeah. are in the mid of the bull market, and uh, this is a good area actually for you to buy some. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. And as I, yeah, and as I said, I'm happy that we have a little bit of a cooling off here before I start my my course. Uh, Chen, with just a couple of minutes left, with regard, you mentioned the pandemic in India, how it's affecting their gold buying. What? And as an observer, someone who watches the biotechs very carefully. Are you seeing any sort of um, uh, any sort of a vaccine or anything coming forth that gives you hope that COVID could be dealt with fairly quickly? It, it, well, it's possible. Okay, there are just a report. Uh, I got a lot of questions, phone calls from my friends that Hong Kong just had a double yeah a du- double uh, infection, and the person who was infected in March and got reinfected again. Oh, but the okay. good news was he's asymptomatic, so which means. So his previous infection had to help him. The second infection, he has no symptom whatsoever. So actually, he probably he still has some antibody even after four months. So that's a good sign. So probably, if we got a vaccine working, probably will last at least three to six months. So that, that that's the thing I'm I'm looking at. So you know, and also I'm investing in the biotech that uh, can produce long-lasting, uh, you know, antibody, long-lasting. So they, 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 they did some other, but because they were doing vaccine on animals, they can last for three years. So they continue uh-huh. generating antibodies. So that's uh, IMV, that's one of the stuff. I mean, so those, those are things I'm looking at. And, uh, it, it, you know, if they work, it will be a huge home run, but it may, may not work, right? So, but, yeah. so you, but, right. but you must say you take the risk. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a symbol, INV, Chen, did I hear you say? Yeah, idea, um, Mary and uh, Victor, right? I mean, it's a Canadian, little Canadian firm. They haven't started trial yet. They can start at trial any time, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's right. my latest pick. That the the thing interesting is they're they're very safe. So start they start with the older patient, right? Older mm-hmm. volunteer so in some ver- versus other, and then their their vaccine can last very very long. That's actually mm-hmm. a very all right uh, uniqueness well, of that. Yeah, well, folks, you might want to, again, if you're interested and you're really active in investing and you might think uh, biotechs are something you'd be interested in, you really should check out Chen. He does an excellent job. I don't know of anybody that uh, that follows the early biotech stories better than Chen. He also does an excellent job in the uh, in the energy sector and the mining sector as well. Uh, so ChenPicks.com is a place to go uh, to avail yourself to Chen's well, he works extremely hard. He has connections everywhere in the biotech sector. He knows people in China. Uh, very wealthy, uh, a very uh, a great source of wealth, I think, a wealth of ideas that come from Chen Lin. Uh, Chen, thank you so much for spending a few minutes you, with Jake. us today, and we'll look to talk to you again sometime soon. 